should be. Should be. So Everyone. check this out, we're here at the DivX, at the Roe v. booth, right? Yep. So who are you? Uh, I'm Tracy Michelle, product marketing for DivX. So uh, DivX has been around for like 12, 13, 14 years. Yeah, yeah. And so, since 2002. And now, uh, now Roe v. took over like two, three, four years ago, right? Uh, yeah, we've been with Roe v. since 2011. So why, why did you go with Roby? Uh, well, Roby acquired us in, in 2011, so we've been underneath the, the Roby uh, company for about three years now. Um, and I've been, you know, working to integrate some of our some of the Divix products with Roby and, and such. So, so, been, uh, so what is uh, because Divix is super famous, everybody knows. And uh, what does Roby do exactly? Uh, so Roby's. Uh, more known for their guidance and their search and recommendations. They have a strong data portfolio as well, and of course, uh, IP. So it's kind of like uh, the uh, the IMDb of uh, media, uh, kind of like metadata. Yep. 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 Uh, they have guides. Yep. You know, guides for linear TV. The electronic program guide. Yes. Maybe Roby is one of the leaders for that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like. Famous all over the world, or not uh, famous, but probably North America, boring. a little bit yeah. centric in North America on the guide side. So let's say the Comcast, the Time Warner Cable, and stuff like that. They probably use Roby for yeah. powering Some their. Of those do, yes. Yeah. And so, what are you showing the latest with Divix? What's going on here? So, so Divix, we uh, have a lot of ex new, exciting products. Uh, last year at. Uh, at IBC, we announced the first uh, consumer software ever for DivX HVC. So that allows consumers to uh, create and play back HVC content um, at that time up to 1080p on a PC or Mac. Um, so that includes a converter, a web player, PC player, Mac player. Um, then a couple months later, uh, just before CES, we launched uh, 4K uh, profile to be. Um, incorporated into our DivX 10 consumer software. And then um, over the last six months, uh, we have been working very heavily, as you know, DivX is quite, uh, quite well known for playback on devices. So we allow consumers to create videos and then they can take it to any kind of devices, mobile, T smart TV, Blu-ray player, DVD, and then playback uh, this high quality video. So um, in the last six months, we've been working, or last year or say, we have been working very hard with a lot of the IC partners, the OEM partners, who are all, as you know, are all trying to promote 4K uh, these days a lot. And so we're working to get DIVX certification for HVC and 4K into uh, smart TVs. So we just have some demonstrations here for, uh, this is a Broadcom, set-top box platform. So it might uh, be ARM, right? I think so, yes. So, uh, so what, what you've been doing last six months is you've optimized DivX video playback on all, every one of these processors. Yeah, so we work very closely with the ICs to make sure that our profile can work on devices, on the chips, essentially, right? Because as, as long as we know it can be on the chip, then all of the OEMs can use those chips and be well assured that they can certify it with our profiles. And that's one of the things that DivX has been doing since DivX became kind of like corporate, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, is it since 2002 uh, or since 2005? Probably on devices since maybe 2004. And yeah. so since then, DivX is always optimizing video playback on right, hardware. Right. So as new, uh, you know, new containers and new codecs come out, like H.264 was, you know, a lot, like, years back, then we always uh, adapt to those new new technologies that come out. So obviously, HEVC is the, the latest codec, was just ratified about a year ago, and so, you know, we were um, excited to be, we're quite early to market with HEVC as well as uh, 4K solutions. So when HEVC gets ratified, does that mean uh, it's done, or is it just beginning of HEVC yeah. and gets optimized over time. Exactly. It's really just the beginning. So they standardize the, it's a standard, right, the codex standard, and then people can take that standard and really they can do whatever they want with it. Uh, what, what we do and what we're very good at is working with the device supply chain to make sure that we can make, we can, you know, make settings that are optimized for devices. And you improve HEVC? You make the best one or? Is that what you claim? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have very, very, like, we also have uh, main concepts as part of our company as well. They're very well known for their codecs, 
So they have a uh, codec SDKs, they have a transcoding application called Total Code. So those are on the creation, like more on the professional creation side. So you can use these tools to output into all of the predefined DivX profiles that ultimately come out to be able to be played back on these devices. So from the creation all the way through the delivery with our DRM to the playback, it's very uh, guaranteed high quality. So I spent several years of my life encoding video, so I'm, uh, I'm very interested to know uh, what's the latest with encoder. Is there a way to use a whole bunch of grids, server capability? Do you power this, like uh, some kind of cloud encoding? Yeah, so we, have, uh, we do have a few customers that, that uh, are using main concept products in the cloud for encoding. Um, we, we also announced a license agreement, I believe it was at CES, with uh, Zencoder. I don't know if you're familiar with them. So Zencoder has agreed to support DivX HVC profiles. Um, and they're like a cloud, probably the biggest cloud encoding service uh, in the world. Um, so they, you can go to their service and, and output DivX HVC files and, on Zencoder service. To save a lot of time using... Uh... Uh, the fastest, best encoding yep. solutions. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, so, so here, for example, this is a Snapdragon. Yeah, so this uh, is the 8974 uh, reference tablet. This is playing uh, DivX HVC 720p. So this is around less than one megabit per second bandwidth. So one very megabit. high quality. Uh, That's awesome. Like, like I said, this less is, than one megabit per this second. This might be the same processor that's uh, in the Galaxy S uh, something? Uh, it is. I, I believe it is. It yes. might be the Snapdragon 800 kind of processor? Yes. And so that's 720p. Could you do 1080? Uh, we, I don't think we've gotten 1080 on this this platform yet. But uh, So this, this, uh, this is a software implementation, right? There's no hardware acceleration going on here. So... Okay. Qualcomm's next platform, we're working with them on that as well. It's the, it'll be supporting HVC on the hardware and then also supporting up to 4K you know, on a tablet screen. Um, so we're working on them with that as well. But since 2004, you've done a lot of hardware acceleration for Deco, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. And all kinds of different processors. So, so that's why we're just at the very beginning of HVC, right? Because the chips are just coming out right now and, you know, HVC into the hardware. And then obviously we, we will be able to leverage that. H264 is hardware, all uh, yeah. total hardware. Yeah. All the different yes. ones, it's just yeah. hardware. Yeah, exactly. And uh, H265 is coming. It's coming. And this that's why this one is, is what I'm saying is it, this just a software implementation um, but it's still it's very good actually you know it's it's uh, maybe the battery is not ideal like on the hardware uh, hardware one it would be obviously a little bit better but still it's still pretty good like you can probably get three four hours even doing HVC uh, decoding and what more are you doing um, so this one here is uh, this is uh, just comparing Oops. Is it, I can put this up on this screen. Is that? Do you want me to do that? Yeah. Okay. So it's comparing uh, ABC and exactly H.264 versus H.265. So now you can see at uh, two different codecs. So DivX uh, H.264, DivX H.265. But this is pretty low resolution, right? SD, really but you can see the difference in the bit rate. So this is where you're getting the 50% savings. So you save 50%, it might even look better here. See, it, it, it does, yeah. Even the quality might even be a little bit better, but you're getting half, the bit rate. getting half the bit rate, right. That's cool, so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's awesome. It saves a lot. same for, like I said, for 720. Uh, like I said, for this one, it's about less than one megabit per second for it. That's like, you know, low HD. Message. So if I want to use a DivX solution to encode DivX HEVC, is it free? Uh, for consumers, yes. DivX 10 is a you know free software. Free Anybody encode, can download it, free. free to encode. Yep. And then on the professional side, we also, like I said, we have Total Code, we have Codec SDK. So those are more for you know B two B. But in the consumer side, do I get the max free. quality? I get yep. all the settings, yep. everything. It's actually using the exact same encoder. It's just, but it's a consumer tool, right? So it's very easy to use, uh, not not really meant to be in a uh, professional environment, but same, so same encoder, encoder. exactly. And uh, are there going to be some more advanced uh, advanced profiles for for this uh, HEVC? Yeah, uh, 
you know, because we're so at the beginning, you can see 4K will probably be an, an evolution of sorts, right? It'll have a roadmap, so you'll see new specs coming out for 4K as the, the TVs will support sort of higher and higher uh, profiles for 4K. Same with HVC, we'll always, you know, we'll continue to improve for a while on the compression side as well as on the real time encoding side. So, has DivX ever worked with camera makers, like uh, putting DivX encoders uh, in the camera? We did, yeah. Like maybe 2006, we had some Casio, uh, I think Pentax was uh, using our encoder uh, for video capture on their cameras. Um, so that was uh, in Europe, I think. So yeah, we had. Would it make sense to come back to that? To like, because I would like to see a, a 4K HEVC real time camcorder uh, yeah, yeah, that encodes yeah. in the maximum high profile. Right. And so no today, I think today it's just starting in the um, professional, you know, camera side. I, I think it's still early on the, you know, consumer camera side. But, uh, we, you know, obviously we'll get there. People will want to have that content. I know that uh, GoPro has a 4K profile, but it's it's kind, it's a little bit of a hybrid profile. Seconds. Yeah, it's, it's not quite 4K, but it's close. But now Sony's coming out, and Panasonic, yeah. and uh, yeah. all these guys cannot be seen. Yeah, so what the nice thing is, right, they can take what, you know, because those guys are all probably using some different kind of format of 4K. Very high bitrate. Yeah, they can run it through converter using our 4K HVC compression, and then still have, you know, very high quality. And for example, encode it to DivX HVC 4K before uploading to uh, To play it on a TV or... But yeah. I wonder how much time does it take to encode compared to H.264? And uh, can you encode in real time the 4K on the uh, laptop or...? We're, get, we're getting closer, not quite yet. We, as Like I said, we've been working on HVC for about the last year and a half. Um, our, we had to prioritize what we would focus on. So our first priority was, was quality, right? To, to hit very high quality. And then second second priority is speed, encoding speed. So now so now we're into that into the encoding speed work right now. So on the fastest uh, Intel processor let's say right now it's a bunch of twenty something frames per second or below or it's it's not real time yet. Yeah it's not quite real time. It's getting there though. Alright. Cool so thanks a lot and what's gonna be the future with Divix is uh, what's what's next? Uh, so we're really excited, you know we're really we're at this show because we're trying to um, Really showing off HVC technology to service providers, operators for over-the-top services. Um, DivX HVC can be used. Uh, we have a studio-approved DRM. We received uh, ultraviolet approval for a common file format in uh, December. So we're, you know, we have a lot of really great tools. Um, obviously, we're well into the CE devices, which is what a lot of these. Uh, service providers want to be able to get you know over the top to a whole bunch of different screens and so we have a pretty good uh, leading edge solution for that. Cool, okay, thanks a lot. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.